John, do you think the redacted version of the affidavit will reveal many new details? I think it could. I think that seems to be what took the judge over uh, to the side of releasing this material. He, that was his inclination, and uh, he wanted to see a strong case by justice as to why not. And he didn't get that. They obviously uh, did come forward. But I can't imagine that Trump is going to be happy with this document, given the fact it was an advocacy document written to persuade the judge to find probable cause to, do, to undertake a search. That isn't a document that's going to put a lot of pluses in for Donald Trump mm. and to the exact opposite. So I think he's going to be very unhappy with what he finds and what comes out, and it will not be good for Donald Trump. And Judge Gardner, I mean, does it make sense to you, from a legal standpoint, that the former president's legal team didn't take an official position in court on whether the affidavit should be released? I mean, they said a lot of stuff on TV, but in court, they were silent. Because, uh, because he doesn't want... He, because he's deeply ambivalent. Because if he came out in court and said, I align myself with the press that wants this stuff uh, released, if he were then charged, he would have a very difficult time saying that the release of this information was what prejudiced him when, in fact, he was the architect of that release. So, um, you know, he, he's playing both games at, hmm. at the same time. That's what he's doing. And, Andrew, I mean, according to the Department of Justice, the investigation is still in its early stages what would the FBI's role be in the probe right now? I mean, what is the, what's the division of labor, essentially, between the, the Bureau and the Department of Justice? Who's ultimately driving this the train? Sure. So you have really two very separate uh, but, but, but um, tied together uh, efforts going on here, Anderson. So the one thing is the investigation of the possible crimes that were laid out in the search warrant, so violations of the Espionage Act and obstruction of justice, things like that. So you've got agents that are looking very closely at what Trump officials said and did in this course of conduct over the last year and a half in, in retaining the documents. At the same time, you have counterintelligence agents that are looking very closely at the material itself, trying to come up with a damage assessment, essentially, essentially to be able to say, how much have we possibly lost in terms of this very sensitive, most classified information? They're looking at the surveillance videos from the area around the basement where the documents were stored. They're trying to identify everyone who comes up on those on those videos or interviewing those people. So it's uh, two very complicated and labor intensive uh, efforts underway at the same time. John, do you think heavy redactions create more confusion? I mean, I, I read one former prosecutor describe it as a p potential Rorschach test and people kind of read into it what they want to see in those black boxes. Mm -hmm. That's a good metaphor because that's exactly what will happen. And I guarantee you the Trump <clears throat> supporters and Trump himself will find lots of reasons to complain about all that black space. Uh, and they'll go on endlessly about how their things are dark conspiracies are going on. And this is evidence of it. Of course, it's not. Uh, but that's what they will argue. And no one can refute it until the rest of the document is released, if and when that ever happens. It'll be like Wordle. We're all trying to figure out how many letters can fit into a certain <laughs> space. Judge Gardner, <laughs> is, is there any scenario under which the release of the affidavit, even the redacted version, could then complicate things if the case ever got to the point of charges or a trial? Sure. I mean, we have to step back to some degree. You know, the statute, the espionage statute, includes people uh, who have disseminated information, not just people who have, you know, collected defense information. So, and it, it's, it's a very broad statute, deals with unlawful transfer, unlawful destruction, and unlawful retention. So it's possible, and so that, that it's possible that they would conclude, if it's a mere unlawful retention, that they did not want to charge anyone. Uh, right? I mean, that's that's always possible, that it was just a whoops. Now, we've talked about this before. It looks a little bit different than a whoops, given the length of the steps that the president took, the former president took, to keep the stuff in hand. But the danger here is, if anyone is mentioned in that affidavit, quite a far from the president, former president, rather, who then is not charged. That's the whole concern here. This is an investigative document an affidavit, not a charging document. And presumably at the conclusion of the investigation, they may say, well, we're going after you or you, but not you. And what the release of this information could do is to hurt the people who aren't charged and then, you know, have serious impact um, on any prosecution going forward, so particularly given a president who hasn't, 
you know, who, who has, seems to have no problem calling people or, you know, threatening people. So, Andrew, just, I mean, logistically, how does it work? If, if, the F, if this is an ongoing investigation, and theoretically in an ongoing investigation, the FBI would be contacting people, having, conducting interviews, given all the drama surrounding the search, would that have, just for, I mean, I don't know if it's political reasons or any reasons, would, they, would, the, would people in the FBI just be like, okay, let's just put everything on hold while the Fuhrer dro dies down? Or how does that work? No, I, I don't suspect that people in the FBI put the effort on hold. They're going to obviously take the the steps that the Department of Justice authorizes them to take, and they're going to move forward with this despite the political furor around it and the and the kind of uh, impassioned views on both sides. The bigger problem, Anderson, is the the drama and the attention on this, specifically around the re revelation potentially of information from the affidavit, will could have a chilling effect on people's desire to get involved in the investigation. So the next time the Bureau goes out and knocks on someone's door, having seen all of this played out in the media and, and fought over over the course of these motions, it's much less likely that people will be willing to just sit down and talk to FBI agents and share the information that they know. And that Absolutely. will slow them down and impede the investigation. Andrew McCabe, Judge Gertner, appreciate it. John Dean as well.